going on guys? JD from New York here and this is WWE Off The Script episode number 68 part number 2 for your Saturday morning and what a Saturday morning it is going to be for you guys. I have breaking news when it comes to Wrestlemania 32 and where Vince McMahon is mentally right now with Wrestlemania 32. There is a sense of urgency backstage in WWE when it comes to what will probably be the biggest event in WWE history. I got loads of news on that. Plus Dean Ambrose, the big NXT special coming up on July 4th. A ton of news, guys. Don't go anywhere. Grab a cold beverage this morning, and let's get started with Off The Script. Before I do that, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Facebook. Follow me all over social media. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, I want you guys to fucking people's elbow that motherfucker. That subscribe button, because this is the number one source for WWE news and rumors right here on YouTube.com. Now, let's get right into the news, guys. I don't, I don't want to waste any of your time. WrestleMania 32. You guys know how I feel about it. You guys know where I stand on it. I talked about Lesnar and Steve Austin in part one of Off the Script this weekend. If you missed that show, link is down below in the description. But Vince McMahon recently held a meeting stressing the importance of WrestleMania 32. It is no secret WWE is hoping to break attendance records at AT&T Stadium next year, and it's no small feat that they're trying to accomplish. Vince McMahon likes to have the top of the WrestleMania card drawn up by SummerSlam. However, he's been a little bit more frantic this year. It's interesting because Vince seems to envision a fantasy lineup for next year's show in Arlington, Texas. As mentioned on Off The Script, Part 1, the seeds were planted for Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Brock Lesnar this week, but many doubt that this match will actually happen. Nonetheless, it's not the only fantasy match that has been discussed. Sting versus The Undertaker is about Vince originally wanted for this year and wants to do it in 2016. One idea had The Undertaker going into the Hall of Fame the night before. The Rock vs. Triple H is penciled in following their angle from this year's WrestleMania, but Vince is still pushing to do Rock vs. Brock Lesnar. If they went this direction and got Austin, they could do Triple H vs. Austin to close out the authority angle. But again, there are many in WWE that have their doubts about Austin ever working in a WWE ring again. That must continue to be stressed throughout all these rumors. The one real surprise, as far as fantasy matchups go, is John Cena versus Hulk Hogan being a possibility. Now, Hulk Hogan has made it quite clear that he wants the retirement match, and Hogan wants... To have it at WrestleMania 32 because he knows WWE is going to break attendance records. And he has not backed off that stance at all. His WWE deal isn't contingent on a match. And neither Vince nor Hunter are keen to give him a match at WrestleMania. But Hulk Hogan continues to be politic. Uh, and John Cena right now isn't opposed to having this match happen. He's actually in agreement for this match to take place to those that he has spoken to. Despite all the fantasy dream scenarios, Vince has stressed that they need to be careful with current top stars so they do not get lost in the shuffle as WrestleMania 32 approaches. He wants them to be showcased as well, but has to put out a sense of urgency in regards to making their lofty goals a reality with the biggest show of the year. Now, as far as Hulk Hogan goes, I don't want to see Hulk Hogan in a ring. I don't want Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania in a wrestling capacity. That's just that's just the way I feel. Maybe a couple years ago, we were more open to it, but as the years go on, and we know Hogan is recuperating from the numerous surgeries that he's had on his back and his legs and his... Whatever, man. Hogan is a fucking train wreck. You cannot have Hogan go 
at WrestleMania and give you a fantasy match that you are expecting. It's not going to happen, okay? If you want to put Hogan with John Cena in a tag team scenario where he comes in and gets the hot tag, he does his finger pointing, his punches, his big boot, his leg drop, and that's it. He rides off into the sunset. Brian Alvarez of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter has stated that he might, you know, see Hogan in a Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal situation and have Hulk Hogan win that to pay homage to Andre the Giant. And that would be Hulk Hogan's last hurrah. Now, I don't want to see that either. Because then Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, to me, is nothing but a pre-match or a pre-card show uh, match. That's that's not going to happen. I really don't care about that. I would just keep Hulk Hogan in a non-wrestling capacity at WrestleMania. I think Hogan's years are done, and I think Hogan needs to get that through his thick skull. Rock versus Triple H, I do see that happening. Undertaker versus Sting, I do see that happening. If you don't want to put Brock Lesnar with Stone Cold Steve Austin, and I know you guys were very vocal about this in part one, what about the injuries? Brock Lesnar is stiff. You can't have Austin being very fragile with all the surgeries he's had and the injuries. Have him go in against Brock Lesnar and just have a great match, man. You got to be careful. You got to take care of Steve Austin. Why not put Steve Austin with John Cena? Why not have that match happen and find another opponent for Brock Lesnar? Maybe a Samoa Joe. Maybe a Kevin Owens. Who knows, man? Who knows? On top of that, I would love to see Shawn Michaels come back for one more match. Possibly against Daniel Bryan. I think that would be great to see Daniel Bryan and Shawn Michaels go one-on-one, -on -one, man. The teacher and the student. Either way you look at it, it's fun to talk about this because WrestleMania this year, the next coming WrestleMania in 2016, is going to be the biggest event of all time. And it's going to be unbelievable. Okay? Unbelievable. Attendance records are going to be shattered. It's going to be the biggest event in WWE history. It's just going to be fun watching how WWE handles this and to see what kind of card they put together to get to that point and make their goal about selling out that stadium and having it be the biggest record of all time. So that's where Vince McMahon is standing right now when it comes to WrestleMania 32. Speaking of Stone Cold Steve Austin, a lot of people compared Dean Ambrose to playing Stone Cold Steve Austin's role of 1998. It doesn't look as though The Shield will be brought back right now. However, we are expecting a top guy to turn heel and quickly because there are too many babyface heavies right now on WWE television with John Cena, Randy Orton, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and potentially Brock Lesnar and Chris Jericho coming back as babyfaces. A lot of things right now leaning towards the babyfaces. They got to switch it up and make it a little bit even between the faces and the heels, but that's where WWE is standing right now. The Shield is not going to be brought back and one of those potentially could be turning heel. I could see Roman Reigns turning heel. Or if you want to bring Brock Lesnar back, back right now and have him remain a heel. But I don't know what's going on with, with WWE, man. You know, things change like that. And when Brock Lesnar comes back, I'm sure he's going to be cheered just like he was when he made his exit right after WrestleMania. But it's going to be interesting to see what WWE does with all the baby faces right now. And I know I am a very, very heel-orientated type of guy. I love the heels. And WWE needs to fix that quick because you don't want too many baby faces on WWE TV. That's probably why one of the reasons they brought up Kevin Owens and gave him the role that he has right now currently. So look forward to that. Speaking of NXT, WWE Wednesday night, um, it was reported that they would air the July 4th live event from Tokyo, Japan as a special event on the WWE Network. Many major matches are scheduled to appear on the card, including the live event return of Brock Lesnar as he faces Kofi Kingston and Kevin Owens defending his NXT Championship against Finn Balor. The announcement of Balor Owens uh, taking place took place many people by surprise as Owens was called up to the main roster unexpectedly very recently. This puts off a planned match for the show between Baylor and the returning Chris Jericho. Jericho signed on to appear at several live events over the course of the summer, which includes the two house shows in Japan. Much like Jericho, Neville has extensive experience overseas. The two will likely work a match that will favor the Japanese style of wrestling since both are skilled in that area. So Jericho will go one-on-one -on -one with Adrian Neville during this live NXT special, man. It's going to be fucking unbelievable. Or the live WWE special that's going to be taking place on July 4th. All right. 
So the two have never squared off before, as they have never been on the main roster at the same time. Jericho was last on television last summer. In addition to returning to the ring for live events, Jericho will also be hosting the upcoming season of WWE Tough Enough. While it's said that he will be more of a Ryan Seacrest than a Stone Cold Steve Austin, he will be the new face of the show, so the tie-in with the WWE Network is likely no coincidence. WWE has not yet made the advertising of Neville Jericho official as of press time. As he notes, the card is still subject to change. Sami Zayn news. NXT champion Sami Zayn is reportedly expected to return to in-ring action with the WWE in October. As previously reported, Zayn had issues with his left rotator cuff that required surgery, which he had on May 26th in Birmingham, Alabama. Dave Meltzer of F4WOnline.com and the Wrestling Observer Newsletter states that Zayn is expected to return in October, boating all goes well and smoothly in his recovery. Okay, so um, Sami Zayn will be back on WWE television. October is looking like the time frame. Get well soon. I can't wait to see him be promoted to the main roster as it's going to be a great time in the WWE, man. All their youth is finally getting their chance to shine. You got Kevin Owens, Baylor, Adrian Neville right now succeeding on the main roster. I can't wait to see Sami Zayn, so look forward to him. Had surgery on May 26th. He will be back sometime in October in 2015, okay? And finally, guys, to end this week's Off the Script Part 2... All right, uh, what do I got here? What do I got here? I got something. As the month of June rolls in, TNA is continuing working on one of its big, biggest annual events of the year, Slammiversary. This year's Slammiversary pay-per-view will air on June 28th from the Impact Zone in Orlando, Florida. The presumed main event for the show will see TNA World Heavyweight Champion Kurt Angle put his title on the line against Ethan Carter III. As TNA has done for the past three years, it has used Slammiversary to announce its annual TNA Hall of Fame inductee later in the year. All right. Just before Bound for Glory, a ceremony will be held for this year's inductee or inductees. According to the PW Insider, TNA has pitched an offer to one of its former stars, AJ Styles, for 2015 TNA Induction Hall of Fame. Around April or May, TNA pitched the idea to Styles. But he reportedly turned them down. Styles, the current IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, is said to have rejected the offer due to his priorities being the new Japan Pro Wrestling and Ring of Honor, um, you know, working with them affiliate, okay? In addition to being inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame, the company wanted Styles to wrestle one last match for the company at either Slammiversary or Bound for Glory. AJ Styles turning down TNA for a Hall of Fame induction and... Uh, due to his prior engagements with New Japan Pro Wrestling and Ring of Honor. There was a recent interview that I read also with AJ Styles that he said he might end up in Global Force Wrestling with Jeff Jarrett working some shows and events over there. He also he was also asked about returning or coming to the WWE, possibly NXT. He says as long as it makes sense for him financially and makes sense for his family, he will do whatever it takes to build his brand, the AJ Styles brand. He's leaving the door open. He's not giving you guys a yes or a no. If it is good for his family, if it's good financially for him, he will do it and look into it. So that's the news on AJ Styles. Continuing where I left off last week when I reported that WWE now has opened some eyes and are intrigued about bringing AJ Styles into NXT as Triple H wants to take NXT on the road three times a week. Okay, now, that's all I got for Off the Script, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. I got more news coming on Sunday. I got news on Money in the Bank. Preview and predictions going out for that. Giving you guys a rundown of the card right now. And I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about the WrestleMania 32 news and rumors. And I'll see you guys on part three of Off the Script, the number one fucking source for WWE, right here on YouTube.com. I'll talk to you guys later.